Welcome to Field of Four. I'm Abby J, and it's summertime, and I've got Michael from Mark of the Potter with us today. And Michael, I don't know about you, but it's been a great summer, and I'm still fishing. We had we've had lots of rain. My gardens look good, but today I wanted to have you on the show to tell everybody about what you do at Mark of the Potter and why it's so different because a lot of my friends, they love to come there. My fly fishermen, all the men that fly fish with me, they like to come in there and buy their wife a gift uh, because it's a very unique. And why is it so unique? Thank you, Abby. Thanks for having us. And um, it is unique because Mark of the Potter has been around for a long time and it's, uh, it's, it's handcrafted pottery, uh, pottery from a lot of artists. It's food safe, uh, functional, and uh, useful. And so uh, makes great gifts, of course. I see you brought a box. I want to know what's in that box. In this box? OK. Yeah. It's like Christmas. Yeah, every, every it is time, like Christmas. <laughs> every time we fire a kiln, it's like mm -hmm. Christmas. And so. Uh, and you do that twice a month, right? Uh, twice to once a month, depending on how many weeks we have in the month. It's right now, it's about once every four weeks. Okay, all right. Um, we have, you know, in addition to the pottery, we have some song goods to go oh, with the pottery. Nice. And so, uh, like a pot holder. Um, this is very nice, yeah. And these are handmade sewn? Those are handmade also, yes. But who, actually, our assistant manager does those because she is a very... Uh, artistic crafty uh and that's lisa right that's lisa lisa yeah. our assistant manager and uh, she also makes uh wine cozy or uh or i have seen those things. yeah those so that you can uh you know have your those your are nice piece. yeah so you don't really mess up your tables if exactly. you've got fine tables this is perfect that's a really unique exactly. uh i haven't seen that yeah. perfect yeah, gift idea for uh the and, holidays and you know stoneware pottery and that that's what this is stoneware pottery from mark of the potter um made you know we put the yellow dot on to show it was made by one of our potters so if you're in mark of the potter looking around the pieces with the yellow dots were made there um, and then we have pottery from another 30 or 40 other potters and potteries most of them from around the southeast but some of our favorite potters are also from a little ways away vermont for one uh oh really i didn't know that yes um a uh, guy that used to be in Georgia, actually, that moved to Vermont. He still brings us pottery. Um, we get some things from uh, um, from Arkansas, as a matter of wow. fact. Uh, some jewelry here, diamond jewelry, which is awesome. Uh, oh, that's pretty. Nice, uh, yeah, handmade jewelry. It is. It and that, is. there's a necklace that uh, matches this. So. And, and it's actually pottery. Um, it's a technique that they do, that they color the clay and make a loaf and mm -hmm. slice it up. And the cool thing is you got the shiny outside to see, but you look at the back and you see the same design there because of uh, just the way it's made. Very nice. Uh, it's, it's nice stuff. Of course, we have uh, Brie Bakers. Uh, oh, I've seen those. Can, Everybody yes, loves those. And they there's do. two different sizes, right? There, there are a variety of sizes. Different potters make them. Uh, here's our coaster. Some more sewn goods for putting on your table. Nice. Um, we should have another Brie Baker in here somewhere that's, uh, well, I'll just come to what I've got. We have a teapot. Oh, that's very This was made pretty. at Mark of the Potter. Oh, look at the uh, colors. And Laurie the Faye. The, uh -huh. de the details and that. And this is so original, unique, uh, one of a kind pottery. This is why I think a lot of people keep coming back because they don't have to worry about it being mass produced because you're sp you're supporting local locally uh, artisans that's true and uh, that is gorgeous okay yeah that is Laurie Fay Laurie Fay Dean uh, she does great work um, here's a jug that Matt our head potter has done uh, another piece of stoneware Put your favorite beverage in there to age or or to sip out of your choice. Um, and we have this is actually from Vermont, uh, piggy bank. Um, oh, look at the color of that. That color is gorgeous. Yeah, very th those are very popular. Yeah, love that. Here's a mug that Laurie Fay has done. You see the similar pattern there. Oh, to match the with the yeah, teapot. Very nice. And those are great for coffee or tea because they, they keep them warmer for a while. Um, you know, you can sip, uh, 
keeps your beverage warmer or colder if you're if you're drinking iced tea. Um, this is by Sandra Byrne in Tennessee. Uh, she is a whimsical um, artist mm. and gives us a lot of really cool things. Uh, that is just a little could be a salt cellar, a uh, short utensil holder, uh, something along those lines. Here's our other Brie Baker. A little uh, little fancy oh, twist a little, there. I love the holder. I yeah. love that. That's that's really nice. Yeah, it's multifunctional actually because uh, you can also put your knife in there to keep it in place. Right. So uh, you can serve. And you have your right. And you have your your handle as well. And then about the only non-functional but uh, artistic. I mean, for art purposes, uh, a vase. This is a Sager foil by Jean Gandy in Florida. Oh, I can show you how it can be functional. You get one flower here, maybe. We'll try this. Voila. And there you have it. <laughs> very pretty, very pretty. And this is a very nice touch. Uh, I think that uh, a lot of times uh, people are looking for unique gifts and, and Mark of the Potter has it. Since it, since it is uh, uh, garden time, I wanted to show you uh, uh, how I make my blueberry crumb pie. To, awesome. Yeah, and I've, I've used uh, some of the stoneware to do it with, but these are the ingredients you take. It's very simple, Michael. You take four cups of blueberries, and as you were coming in, you could probably see my blueberries in bloom up there. Yes. they Everything's in uh, bloom, harvest. Yes. It's harvest time here. There's three uh, tablespoons of flour, a half a cup of sugar, and one teaspoon of cinnamon. And you stir these ingredients up and then you incorporate just a little bit of maybe just a tablespoon of lemon juice. You want to incorporate all of this and then you want to put this in the pie crust. That's so very simple, easy to do, but this is one of my favorites. Michael, and then what you want to do is you want to make the crumb, the crumb base here that goes on top of it. That's a half a cup of sugar, half a cup of flour, and three tablespoons of butter. And what we'll do here is incorporate this, like so. going to be a little bit crumbly. It's a crumble pie, blueberry pie. That's why they call it crumble. It's, it's smelling good already. It's, uh, so you might want to take your fingers and just crumble this on top and make sure you hit all the pie. Get it all together here. Incorporate this and since um, it takes about an hour to cook but I have a surprise. I have one in the oven, so let me uh, get the, the pie out of the oven and I can show you. We'll put this one to the side, that one over there. And I baked this in a Mark of the Potter stoneware, you see? Perfect. This is very gorgeous and this is how it turns out. This is excellent on ice cream or it's just really, really good as a dessert, you know. I know my husband, he will eat every bit of this. If really? I leave it. Yes. <laughs> but you want to refrigerate it after it gets cool. But uh, I really enjoy uh, making pies out of the stoneware. It, it is microwave soft, safe as well. So, you know, tell us about the, uh, I, and, and I hope everybody enjoys this recipe. Uh, now I want to talk about one last thing, Michael, you've got a big event coming up next uh, next year, right? We do, Abby. Uh, next year, 2019, will be our 50th anniversary. Um, we uh, are preparing for that now, uh, sprucing up the place and making plans for things to do. I and know. So, I, was, uh, I was driving by there and you were out there uh, weed eating and everything looks gorgeous. Yeah, painting, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, of course, you know, 
I'm not sure it can compare to, to your garden out here, you know, with all the flowers, the sunflowers and all blooming. They're, oh, they're it's beautiful. Just, it's been just a wonderful summer, and we're it just has. blessed to have all the rain. And um, Michael, I want you to tell the audience here how they can uh, find, find you, where you're located, and your website. Well, you can, you can find us on Facebook, Mark of the Potter. Uh, you can find our website, markofthepotter.com. Uh, if you're out and about, uh, you can pick up our brochure in many places around. And of course, it has a little bit of information for, about Mark of the Potter, but most of all, it has a map of the whole area, uh, which a lot of people like to use to get around. Um, and we've been featured in some different places. Uh, if you was to happen to have a book, something like Vanishing Landmarks of Georgia, uh, Mark of the Potter. Here we are. Nice. We're in an old grist mill right by the Sequoia River. Uh, where just the big fish are, right? Where the big fish are. Lots Don't of people like to come see the fish, mm -hmm. especially if they've been uh, fishing and not had much luck. Of course, if they're here at Blackhawk, they'll you have You just tell uh, them, lots. send them my way, and they can catch those big we fish. Do. But we do. Anyway, thank you so much for being on the show. I know we're going to have a great season, and it's great to have neighbors like you. Thank you, Abby. Likewise. All right. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Field of Fork, and I have another guest today with me, Caroline Lou Allen. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Abby. Excited to be here. Yeah, okay. So, Caroline is the marketing coordinator for Jay Moore Farms. They have two locations. They have one in Commerce, and they have one in Alto on 365, and I love, love going there. These are the Georgia-grown peaches, and she brought some pies, but... I just wanted to uh, go back in time a little bit with Jay Moore, uh, Caroline. Can you tell us a little bit of history and what made this business where it is today? Yeah, absolutely. We'll certainly invite um, anybody and everybody to come visit mm -hmm. us at the farm. Uh, but the Eccles family still owns and operates Jay Moore to this day, and the farm started in 1912. Um, and the first generation of Eccles started growing peaches 106 years ago um, wow. and sold them on the side of what is known today as Old Cornelia Highway. And that road runs parallel with hi um, Highway 365. How lucky can um, you be right? to be uh, a, a shed? I'm sure it was. My, my grandpa had a shed up in Hollywood. So this was an old shed, folks. So they were out there and then four lane came and wow. Absolutely. So fast forward, um, passed down to generation to generation, the third generation, um, that's Jimmy Eccles um, and his wife, Valvereth Eccles, took over around the 1960s. So about the time that we retired some mules and started getting tractors on the farm is about the time that Mr. Jimmy took over his family So as a third generation. Um, and he kept buying up uh, land in the Lula Alto area. He took some risk, I'm he sure. He took several risks. In fact, there's several stories of, of, of folks and friends in the area that are just like, why are you, why are yeah. you buying more land? And he just mm -hmm. had this vision. Fast forward 20 years. Um, and Quite the entrepreneur because that's, farming is a risk. And he was a really a smart man, but a brave man to take those risks. Absolutely. So keep, keep expanding the Peach Orchard. 1981, 365 or 985 was paved, extending the route from Atlanta to the North Georgia Mountains. Of course, the stretch of the highway at Jay Moore is called 365. Uh, but uh, the hi the highway was paved and opened on one day, and Jay Moore Farm Market opened the next day. Um, at that time, the farm was still known as Eccles Orchard, um, and it was the third peach stand in Lula Alto area. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Mr. Eccles owned, or Mr. Jimmy Eccles owned two of those peach stands. A cousin owned Eccles Hilltop Orchard. Mm -hmm. I'm getting tongue twisted now. I can only imagine how it was back then. <laughs> so, so, but, but. 
is such an enterprise, and not only is there so much history, Centennial Farm, uh, there are so many things going on there. Tell us, as far as agritourism, it's a mega, uh, you know, place. And what is happening other than the peaches, the pies? Yeah. What is going on? Well, absolutely. Well, real quick, just since 1981, we changed our name to J. Moore Farms, the acronym for Jimmy Allen Eccles. His wife's maiden name is Morrison. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the M-O-R part. Right. Um, still Eccles own and operated. Generation five, uh, four and five are involved to this day and have focused on expanding the farm and agritourism. So in the past 37 years, we've transitioned from just peaches and apples and pumpkins um, to strawberries, blackberries, your summer veggies of squash, zucchini, beans, watermelons. Um, and and, and this will be our 13th corn maze this fall. What's it going to um, be this year? So this year, real excited um, mm -hmm. and, and trying to bring some patriotism to our commu uh, local community, celebrate those that serve us daily. We're going to do saluting hometown heroes. So oh, our wow. EMTs, nice. police officers, um, mm -hmm. fire department. Very nice. Um, so real excited to have that this fall, and we kick off September 15th. Wonderful, wonderful. So other events. Uh, Besides all the things you offer, you do have some uh, farm-to-table events? Yes, absolutely. So we do um, two dinners, one in the spring and one in the fall. Um, to allow um, adults to come out and enjoy the farm without all mm -hmm. the other friends that visit us during the corn maze mm -hmm. with children. So we did two, those two dinners, typically May and September. Um, but then we also have two events that will celebrate two of our top crops, strawberries in May and peaches in August with two you pick events or festivals right. for and families to come make memories and pick since we're not a daily you pick farm like other agritourism locations across the state. So you have an event facility that will hold up to 120 people maybe? About 150 people 50. at the barn mm -hmm. at Jane Moore. And we do rent that facilities for weddings, family reunions, graduations, you name it. Um, just to have a community event space um, in our area between Gainesville and um, Cornelia. So you've been in marketing. Mm -hmm. What do you like most about your job? So probably my favorite thing about working at Jay Moore, of course, of course, um, I grew up in agriculture and uh, just this is a, the time in, in our society and a lot of people are curious about their food. So I do run the social media pages mm -hmm. or the voice behind Jay Moore's social media accounts and I just love that one-on-one -on -one interaction that if you have a question about your food or how these pies were fried or the peaches were mm -hmm. grown or what's my favorite peach variety, I mm -hmm. have those conversations daily um, online and that's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Who is your dad? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My dad um, is um, Gary Black and works for the Department of Agriculture. I am so uh, blessed to know him and how much he has done for Georgia Grown. He has been uh, such an advocate for the Georgia Grown program. Mm -hmm. He's helped entrepreneurs entrepreneurs like me and uh, my friends so uh, it's great to have him as our commissioner of Georgia oh, well, Ag you. commissioner of Georgia that mm -hmm. is yeah but uh, getting back to this though what did you bring us today so today I have um, some dried fruit pies both peach and apple these are your your um, your grandma's recipe, the dough that, that if you're great. if you're at Jane Moore, the, the dried pies, the, the dough is more of a biscuit um, consistency and it is just jam packed um, with that dried fruit. This is how my um, grandmother made them. Yeah, she and, would and dry they taste this, that way. She would dry these apples out on a tin roof and, and then we would bake, I mean, same way. I can't help it, but I've got to taste this. Absolutely. Please dig in. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Um, dried apples, one of my so favorites. Um, and these are some July Prince uh, peaches that is a freestone variety. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks ask for freestone peaches Memorial Day, but freestones come in after the 4th of July. Mm -hmm. um, and we grow 33 different varieties. Wow. So you can have a different flavor of peach all summer long at the farm. And it was a great peach season, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Great peach season. So, uh, folks, they have it all. And um, we really want to promote agritourism in, in Georgia, especially in North Georgia. I'm a little biased. I can't help that. But anyway, uh, go visit J. Moore Farms. And Caroline, tell them how they can uh, locate you and what your Facebook uh 
Absolutely. How to find you. Absolutely. So jmorefarms.com online. Um, we are open seven days a week at both market locations. Um, on Sundays, it's 1 to 6, but the rest of the week, um, we're open pretty much 7 to 6. Some days, 7 to 7, depending on what time of year um, you're in. If you're harvesting, I'm sure it's more hours. And uh, um, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, just at Jaymore Farms. would love to invite you to like us, follow us, tweet us, however mm -hmm. you communicate. Um, if you prefer to email, send us an email. We'll be happy um, to serve you, but come visit us um, and look forward to having you at the sweet spot. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, for a fun day, uh, stop by there, and these pies are delicious. Absolutely. Thank you for having us coming on the show, and uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Field of Fork, and uh, the last thing I want to cover here is canning. It's canning season, and we are a branding partner with uh, Newell Brands, which is now Ball Jars, and they have come out with two different uh, series of jars that I'm presenting today. They've come out with a lot of new things, but these are really highly decorative, a collection series, and this is the spiral jar. You can do so many things with this. They actually have a little lemonade drink concentrate that they've done with this, and this is the sharing jar. My favorite time of the year is Christmas when I can uh, put things up during harvest season and right now it is harvest season and the sharing jars makes really good sense uh, and they feature a branded cherry recipe on this so you can do so many things. Thank you for joining us today and I hope you get to jar it up, enjoy the harvest and please thank a farmer. <music> We're at Blackhawk Farms and we're going to end the show today guys on my farm. It's beautiful, it's in bloom as I said before. Everything's in uh, it's harvest time and I'm with Savannah and Caroline from Jaymore. So let's take the tour.